Wouldn't pharmacists need uh, proper training before adopting the kind of approaches that you've been talking about? I think the short answer is that they, it depends. They need, yes, they do need more support and training, but I don't see that as a, uh, an insurmountable barrier, or even perhaps in my more optimistic uh, view, a, a, a really significant barrier at all. Pharmacists um, on their undergraduate course, certainly at the School of Pharmacy, uh, get a substantial input on behavioral medicine. And I think there are other areas of the world where that's increasing. For example, I know that um, the Auckland School of Pharmacy is interested in expanding that aspect of their course. So I think it's coming more into the undergraduate curriculum. I think there's a lot of opportunity to do more, but you know it's not absent and there, there's some there and we need to expand that. For pharmacists who qualified like myself um, a lot longer, uh, you know, a, lot, a long time ago, then I think we do need um, professional uh, training, if you like, or, or sort of um, postgraduate uh, aspects of this. But I think that might not be too difficult to do. Most pharmacists that I know who are progressive and interested in um, expanding their clinical role are willing to, uh, you know, engage in extracurricular training and education. There, a lot of them will, will be listening to this video. Okay, that's evidence that pharmacists want to expand and are willing to do that. I think what we need to do is look to partners, um, industry, for example, who um, are in conversations I've had at all sorts of levels in the industry, beginning to really recognize the underdeveloped role of pharmacy and to be interested in um, engaging and partnering with pharmacy. So are there ways in which innovative partnerships between community pharmacy and industry could look at um, how we can bring behavioral medicine training to community pharmacists. Also, can we develop tools that support their clinical delivery? So um, in my own group, we've developed um, uh, digital tools that can triage patients by identifying concerns and doubts about treatment, addressing them, not in a way that replaces the pharmacist, but can prepare the patient for a discussion with the pharmacist and cover some of the low hanging fruit so that the pharmacy uh, interaction becomes more efficient. So there are innovative ways in which we can support the pharmacy's engagement uh, in this way um, through training and other materials, okay? So in my view, yes, it does need support, part of which is training, but we should be able to do that. It's not that hard. I'm really curious about this digital method that you mentioned. Does that mean patients would be given a, an electronic questionnaire of some sort before starting the consultation? Yeah, it does mean we give the patient, it's called persignum. We've demonstrated it works to uh, address beliefs and improve adherence in a proof of principle study in inflammatory bowel disease. And we're, we're developing, developing it further through um, our spin-out company with UCL uh, Business, so UCL is a partner. And it's, it's, it doesn't trick them. It's, it's really quite simple. It's based on my 20 or years worth of research in this area. So it profiles people, it asks them some simple questions, right? Based on validated tools that identifies their perspective on the medicine. It identifies any doubts or misunderstandings that they have about the necessity for the medicine. And it identifies concerns, common concerns and practical barriers. And then based on what they select as their particular um, doubts or concerns, it gives them um, a story, if you like, brief story in, to address that concern or that doubt. And what we find is that can help people develop a more positive attitude towards their treatment, 
overcome concerns which would have been hidden and act as a barrier to them taking the treatment and align them with the treatment. Now, that doesn't replace what the clinician does. It's not meant to do that, but it can be a pre preparation. And in any encounter with the clinician, there's never enough time. There's never going to be like 10 or 15 minutes, you know, it's usually in the realm of five, isn't it? So if you can uncover, if you can encourage the patient to um, address their concerns about the treatment in that way, we think that that will act as a good foundation. It breaks the barrier, right, that many patients have to discussing concerns about their treatment with a pharmacist or a doctor because of that thing I mentioned earlier, where they have two ideas at the same time. I like and trust the clinician, but I don't like and trust the treatment. But I can't tell the clinician that I don't like and trust the treatment because they might interpret that as a lack of trust in them. And I don't want to compromise that relationship. So it can break down that initial barrier that makes adherence and patients concerns about treatment, often something that's hidden in the consultation, very hard to get out. So this sort of program can be a triaging tool. And it, you know, it means that we, we're very much not in the realm of the pharmacist saying to the patient, you know, lie on the couch and tell me about your childhood. It is about beliefs, but it's about common beliefs and concerns, which we can address in practice, and we've shown that in our research. And this is that's one example of a tool that can be used to support uh, patient consultations around medicines. You know, I think this is the area that we need to move more into. And I believe that pharmacy is really, really underutilized all across the world. There's much more that we can do. Professor Rob Horn. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your experiences with us today. That really has been enormously interesting. We look forward to the next chapter. For more information about Professor Horn's work, please follow the link in the description. And please be sure to sign up for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please follow the link below. And thanks for watching. <laughs>